So you've done really big movies like Resident Evil, Ultraviolet, Fifth Element. What excited you about going into another big world like Hellboy? Well, you know, it was hard when Resident Evil came to a close. Um, you know, I'd spent 15 years of my life or more um, making those movies and, and being like this action girl. And I, I feel like I've learned so much in that genre. I, I, I learned so much about the process. I learned so much about like how to help make it a reality for the filmmakers. Um, so I was like, oh, it's really too bad because I have all this kind of useless experience now. <laughs> so when Hellboy come up, I was like, oh, this is so cool because I get to do like something I have a lot of experience doing, but in a totally different way. Um, you know, I've never played a character like Nimue, so I was very excited to be, you know, in another action movie, but to play something that's like worlds away from Alice or Lilu or any of those girls. Well, I feel like too that the Blood Queen is very, I feel like she's an ultimate villain. Like, I feel like if she was in any of the other comic book worlds, she could probably take out some of those villains because you kind of, you can't die. You can just keep going eventually. Well, you know, and, and I think the fact is she's, she, listen, the fact is she's got a big heart, okay? She might be a villain, but number one, she's loyal to her people. She's a queen of the underworld. She's watched her people be marginalized, ostracized, put down uh, for so many thousands of years that she finally wants a union between monsters and humans. And I think that's an incredibly admirable vision. You know, and then of course, as soon as she says her big, crazy, controversial idea, she gets stabbed in the heart with a spear, she gets her head chopped off, her body hacked into pieces and buried for 5,000 years. I'm like, you know what, I would be pissed too when I woke up. I'd want a little bit of revenge. Um, so, you know, for me, she was very relatable. Like, she was a strong woman who's put down and comes back, you know, seeking revenge. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> now, the next movie you have, Monster Hunters, is with Ron Perlman. Did you guys ever yes. discuss that you were going to be in Hellboy and kind of talk about it? Oh, yeah, of course. Are you kidding? I mean, part of, uh, listen, we were so excited when Ron was interested in Monster Hunter because I, you know, of course, when I did Hellboy, like, it was so funny to not have Ron be Hellboy. And when, you know, when my husband told me that like we could potentially get him for Monster Hunter, I was like, yes, no matter what, I get to work with Ron Perlman and it's gonna be amazing. Now, what did you think of David as Hellboy? I think they're both very different, but they both fit Hellboy so perfectly. They do, they do. And they both brought their personalities. I mean, they both have such strong personalities. You know, I think David Harbour brought a kind of innocence to the character um, that I thought was so endearing. You know, he's just this kind of like, you know, this monster who's, who's like a man, but he's just hitting puberty in a sense. So he has this awkwardness of a teenager. And I just thought that was so endearing because, you know, I think so many young people can relate to the fact that, you know, they're different or they feel like monsters inside and no one can understand them. And he kind of represents you know, those marginalized young people out there that are looking for a hero, that are looking for someone to embrace them, to admire, um, to help them find themselves, you know? And, and that's what Hellboy's journey is, is to figure out who he is and where he fits into the world. Well, I gotta say, you guys knocked it 